This is one of the biggest projects I have ever worked on. Over the last six months, I have been working really hard to try and get this working and running, and it's only been very recently that I've gotten this stack in this tech to a point where it actually feels good to work on. It has been a huge undertaking learning to do all of this. I have learned very quickly that mobile dev is very difficult, but I've been able to make it work, and I really wanted to, in this video, kind of show you how I was able to, as a self-taught web dev, actually get a pretty functional mobile app going here, and the stack I ended up using, the way we set all this up, and kind of give you some ideas if you wanted to do this yourself. So I think the best place to start with this is going to be what tech am I using to make all this work? So the core piece of this is React Native, obviously. I'm a React dev. I come from a web background. It made the most sense for me to build this in a React Native platform, but the real secret sauce to this is Expo. Expo is a set of tools which helps with a lot of the native bindings and a lot of the building and a lot of the deploying and a lot of the just things that make mobile apps so painful. If, um, for those of you who aren't aware, before I started doing YouTube, when I was like a freshman in college four years ago, I was, my friends and I built a lot of mobile apps. We got really into doing Unreal Engine and playing with that. We actually made a couple pretty cool games, but we ended up burning out on the idea, not because we didn't like making the games, but because deploying to the app stores was torture. Figuring out the provisioning secrets, figuring out all the build settings, getting everything to work like that was an absolute nightmare. And while with Expo, it's still not the freest thing in the world, they make it a lot easier. And a lot of the things that were like, really, really difficult that I remember being really borderline impossible back then, Expo has made a lot easier. And they also have a lot of really useful packages to handle things like dealing with the camera, dealing with the calendar, dealing with any other normal native mobile function. They have a lot of things that make it a lot easier. So working with Expo has made the actual app portion of this, the dealing with the app store, the dealing with the native bindings, way, way, way easier. Obviously the mobile app is only part of the picture because clearly, because for any serious application, you need to have a backend, you need a server, you need a database, you need to be able to actually like store user data. So the initial way we were doing this was with Superbase and we were using it in the sort of Firebase way. We would go through, the way I initially set it up is I had a Superbase local client working and then I would connect to my database directly via the Superbase client SDK. And that worked to a point, but once the further I got into the project and the deeper I got in, and really once I got past onboarding and was really starting to do like calendar logic and business logic following and profiles and all these things, I was like, you know, this just sucks. I don't, I don't like building apps that way. And I think I, I really wanted a server. There were a lot of things where I'm like, I, I just need a server for this. The way I was architecting everything just didn't make sense. I was like, okay, we need a server. And then my initial thought there was like, okay, well then let's just do a normal HTTP server because I come from a web background. I'm a huge fan of the modern full stack JS stuff. I love Svelkit, Next.js, et cetera. I like having that server directly attached to my front end where basically my whole product is just in one place. And that doesn't really exist in mobile yet. I've heard rumors that like uh, Expo is going to be adding servers and RSCs to React Native, and that's will be really, really cool when that comes out. But that's not here yet, and that's certainly not how I'm building this. So, you know, it, on my mobile app, the way you can kind of think of it if you're a web dev is it's basically a single page app. It, that's an oversimplification, but it, there's no server attached to this. There's no SSR, nothing like that. So we need to have a separate server. So I was thinking, okay, let's just do like Hono or something, just a normal, modern backend server. And I was doing that for a while, and I fairly quickly remembered why I like full stack JS so much and why I like these modern technologies. I spent like, there was one, there was one night a couple weeks ago where I spent like two hours debugging. I was going through and I was doing tons of print statements everywhere, checking all these things up and down the stack because I was having problems syncing up the onboarding between the front end and the back end. It just, the, the call wasn't working. And since we were just using a normal HTTP backend, I was using fetch on the front end. And the problem ended up being, I misspelled one of the words in my fetch request on the front end. It was like very subtle. It was like in one of the middle words, I forgot like an S or something. And I spent two hours debugging that. And I very quickly remembered and realized like, yeah, I really like end to end type safety. I really like it when my front end and back end can communicate in a nice, tight, cohesive way. And what I'd wanted to do for quite a while is go through and actually set up uh, trpc and Next.js. Get Next.js for the back end, trpc for the glue that sticks the React Native and the Next.js together, put all that together in a mono repo and get it working. 
but that is a massive undertaking. I This is probably getting into skill issues territory, but I have always had so many problems with mono repos. I've tried so many times to get them to work, and I always run into problems. It, it never works for me. I can never get it to work. And I, this has been a consistent thing over the years. I've wanted this over the years. I've just never been able to do it. I try. I just, I can't get it to work. And then I just kind of give up and then move on and just jerry rig it together and see if it works. But I finally, but this time I finally sat down and this was part of why I was gone last week is I was like, okay, we are finally going to do this. I'm actually going to make the mono repo work. And thank God for Create T3 Turbo. This is the only reason I was able to actually succeed in this. I changed a lot about this. I The way I ended up actually getting this done is I cloned down Create T3 Turbo, which if you're somehow not familiar, is the T3 stack, but for in a mono repo for full stack applications that include a mobile app. So it has a setup for Next.js, for Expo. It has authentication built into this. It has the database built into it. It has all the packages. It's really well set up and really well done. A uh, really, really great package that completely saved my ass. I would not have been able to do this without this. Um, but the way I was doing things was obviously a little bit different. Instead of using Nextsoft for my authentication, I wanted to use Clerk. Instead of um, my database was a little bit different. The way I wanted to set up my TRPC was a little bit different. I mean, all these things were different, and I had to change a lot about how I was doing all this stuff. But having this as a baseline was a godsend. It did end up taking me many days to get this working. It was a long, arduous process. But now that it's set up, it is, it, it's magical. It, it really is magical that way I have this set, set up. So I'll show you how the code actually works on this in a second, but I'll finish up with the stack here. So we have Next.js, we have TRPC, we have React Native, which means that we get full end-to-end -end type safety. We get like almost, it's really nice having like a back end that feels really close to my front end because you guys have to remember, I work on very small teams. Like in this project, it's just me and two other guys who are helping me out to build out this project. You know, this is, we don't have a dedicated back end team. We don't have a dedicated infra team. We don't have all these things. It's just me and a couple other guys and all of us are full stack and having our front end and back end be tightly coupled and effectively have just a product stack makes such a difference for me. And it's something that I just, I'm not comfortable compromising on at this point. And now that I finally have this for mobile, I, I actually want to work on this mobile app because for a long time, I was just dreading working on this because it sucked. I hated going through and having to have these two different big annoying code bases. I mean, to go through and write my endpoints and then like make my open API schema definition things and document it for myself and then go into my client and actually fetch these with the fetch request. And then it's super janky and annoying and there's no types and I have to type everything and it just, it sucked. And now having this whole thing together feels so, so much better. So really the only other pieces of the stack here is I'm using a uh, clerk for authentication. And the reason for this is because um, obviously I know how to custom roll my auth. I know, I know. But like the big reason why I wanted to use this is because we have to do some complicated stuff with OAuth. Uh, Block uses the calendar very directly and very heavily. And we needed to be able to communicate with the end user's calendar. And Block and clerk makes it super easy to get those OAuth tokens to then call the Google Calendar APIs all in one place. They also have a really good authentication flow set up for React Native. They have all the components. It just made the most sense. Dealing with custom auth in this project would have been really painful. And I don't have the time to spend a month doing the custom authentication, so I'm totally fine with using a provider here. And then we are obviously going to be using Drizzle for my ORM. I really don't use anything else at this point. Um, Prisma is really, really good. I really like it. It's just... Using Prisma and setting up Prisma are two very different things. Prisma, when you're using it, is a godsend. It's amazing. They've done a really, really good job. But I, I played with it again recently, and I've forgotten just how heavy just the schema.prisma is and all the like extra things that we have to set up and put together to actually get Prisma to work. It just feels... Eh, it's just... Especially when I compare it to Drizzle, which is literally just TypeScript, which is so much better. The fact that we have to just compile and generate types out of Prisma, there's just more friction to it to a point that I just, I, it's it's annoying. I don't like how abstracted and how much friction there is. It just, eh. So Drizzle is really my ORM of choice these days. And then um, uh, finally, the last piece of tech here is we're using Supabase for the database. Um it's just like really, uh, it's just a good Postgres provider. And um, ultimately, I kind of figured like, hey, it's got good local dev experience. It's got a good production pipeline. Their scalability is solid. It works really well. I like it. I I'm just going to use that. So 
using Supabase for the database, uh, not for authentication, because again, we need the more complicated OAuth features that Clerk does really well, and we also need really deep integrations with React Native, which again, Clerk does really well. And then um, for our images setup, oh yeah, actually, yeah, there's another thing too. For images, we're going to be using um, Cloudinary. I've talked about them in previous videos. Uh, we need like very complicated and heavy media assets in this, so they're going to be working. I'm going to be using them for that. But yeah, this is kind of the stack here, and really the biggest point of this video and what I really wanted to show off to you guys is how magical this is once you finally get all of it put together, because the setup sucks, but now that it's here, oh, it's, it's good. It's really good. So this is the onboarding. I'm not, the point of this video is not what this product is and what this product does and what I'm building. That will be for another day in the deep future. We've got a new landing page coming, tons of new ideas. I, that's not important today, but this is a very serious and real project. Within this app, what I really want to show off here is I'm just going to show off this name step in the onboarding. If I go over here to, um, if I go over here to my onboarding page, you're going to see that on the onboarding screen, we have a bunch of different steps. So we have like, what's your name? Uh, what do you want your username to be? Agree to privacy and terms, et cetera, et cetera. And the first thing that we have up here is you can see I have to like get like check whether or not they've completed onboarding because if they have, I want to just redirect them out and I need to have a mutation to actually complete their onboarding. But if you look at this right here, this is TRPC. I'm sure a lot of you are probably very familiar with that. Hopefully um, that was huge a couple years ago. I haven't seen as much about it recently. And I do think in the um, web app world, I find myself typically not needing it as much just because like Spellkit has form actions and load functions and Next.js has server actions and server components. So you don't need it nearly as much as you used to. But for this mobile application, it's a godsend. And what you can see here is instead of having to do like a use of, instead of having to go through and set up the fetch and then maybe stick that into React Query or do whatever, I'm just doing api.user.hascompletedonboarding.useQuery. And if I go in here and I hit F12, and we go in here, this is gonna take me into my packages slash API slash root, and it's gonna take me into my TRPC router. And if we can go into this um, user router right here, you can see this is backend code. This is actually my server side code, which is in the same code base and repo setup as my actual mobile app. So I can go in here and I could add something to this completed onboarding. So if I say I wanted to add in an input here. So say I wanted to add an input in here, I add that, and then I go back to my, um, and I go back to my onboarding page here, it's gonna yell at me because I need to actually have my input here. So I'm not passing in my string input and it's gonna yell at me. And then if I go back over to my user.ts and I rightfully remove this input, it will work just fine. So we have this really easy and simple way of within my um, packages directory, I have this API package and I can do all of my API code in here. And then I can consume this API in my mobile app. I can run everything there. I basically get a server that's very closely attached to it, but that's not all I can do. What's really cool too is remember these endpoints, since this is, um, since this is server side code, obviously uh, Expo isn't a server. So I need to stick this server side code into a server somewhere. And the server I'm sticking it into is actually a Next.js app. So in this Next.js app, it's just a normal Next app. But what's really cool is I can also consume these API endpoints in my Next.js app. So if I wanted to debug and test these and I wanted to do some like scratch work there, I can actually use my Next app as like a server side testing ground to test all my endpoints, make sure everything's working, make sure the logic is good, and then consume those on the front end. Because if we go here to, um, you can see I'm kind of a Svelte developer. If we go here to localhost 3000 and it takes a second to load here. So we go here to localhost 3000, we go to my next app. You can see I haven't done anything serious in my next app because I'm just using it as like basically a scratch work here. Uh, it still has the basic create T3 turbo because that's the template I used here. Um, this was when I was testing everything, trying to get my API calls to work. Uh, this was after a very long and hard day, but it did fucking work. So let's go. And then down here, I have this hello there, um, and then my email, which I think I'm going to blur out. And what that's doing actually is this is calling the, um, what's really cool about this is I'm actually signed in with Clark. I can test all my endpoints. I can test my authentication. I can just work with all of it within my next step. It's really, really cool. I'm not getting into the code here because it is really, really complicated. And there's so much to this. I think, um, this absolutely deserves a full tutorial course at some point. I don't, I don't know if I should be the one to make it. Maybe I should. Um, I need to get more experience and spend more time with it, but eventually maybe we'll do like a from scratch T3 turbo course effectively going over 
React Native, Next.js, TRPC, Expo, Clerk to build out a good sample application because this is, um, I mean, like I said, this was re really, really hard, but the, I mean, what I'm trying to convey here is that the end result was so freaking worth it. So to give you like a nice little demo of just how nice this developer experience really is now that all of this is finally set up is I'm in my little table editor here for my local super base instance within my calendars table. One of the core functions of block is we can sync and run your calendar. We can link up for events, do all that stuff. So we need to be able to sync the calendar to our backend. And in order to test this, it's super easy. I just wrote all the functions within my API and within my server, and I can just go over here to my next app. I can go in, I can click on sync the calendar, wait a second here, and then we're gonna go back over here. You can look, all my calendar events now up here. It works, I can test and run everything here, and I basically have this full application and product experience at my fingertips. It's really hard to get set up. This stack, now that I'm actually working with it, feels amazing and I highly recommend if you're in if you're trying to build a mobile app especially if you're trying to do it with a small team and especially if you come from like a web dev background invest in trying to learn this stuff it it'll take you a minute but once you get there it's it's worth it trust me it is worth it so yeah if you guys uh, enjoyed this little kind of rambly ranting thing uh, make sure you like and subscribe and I will uh hopefully talk to you soon